Oh, you got to give me something. All right. So I need kind of a starting place to to kind of leap from to figure out where we're going to place you. All right. So think about that. Think about your timetabling going forward, and registering for co-op, and planning a little bit for the next couple of years. Think about those SHSM programs because there's lots of opportunity there, um, and not a lot of work for you in those. There's not something that's a, a make work project. It's not like taking another course. You're going to actually, because you're in this course already, you're on the path, pathway to kind of do a lot of the things that you need to do in order to get an SHSM in you. All right? So talk to your guidance counselor. Feel free to talk to me. You can email me questions. You can find me. Mr. Howard is becoming a wonderful resource for SHSM programs. He knows all, all, all about them. <laughs> um, but it's definitely something you should start thinking about now. Okay? Questions? Comments? Can you do both? Can you do? Oh, yeah, and uh, special, special. Absolutely. Features. Yep. Yep. They work well, very well together. Yep. What was the thinking between like, two completely different traits? Like, could you, like, Good question. Like, could you do it with two different things, like, to see if you can do it better? Yeah, so if you're going to take co-op twice? Yeah. Yeah, we could, for sure. All right, we could register you um, as early up apprentice in one, and if you kind of get to the end of it, you go, yeah, it's not for me. Um, I'm really kind of leaning more towards this. You can take co-op again, we will re-register you, and you can do that one. And that's not a problem. It's just a little more paperwork, but it's not a big deal. Yep. Some of the people that were talking to us yesterday, they talked about the test that it had a really low like um, passing rate. How often is that test? Is it like just once, or can you do it multiple times? Your CFQ um, is a test that you take at the end of your training. So at the end of your 7,200 hours, after you have your 7,200 hours in, you've got your book signed off that Mr. Fox was referring to. That tells the, the government that you have done this job, this job, this job. It lists everything that is your um, trade, that applies to your trade. And you have to have your trade sign off. So you'll sit down with the representative, they'll go through that. Okay, you're ready to write the test, okay? You can write the test, I believe you can write the test at least three times before you have to take a refresher course. After your third time failing it, they send you, I believe it's four, it's like two or three times you open. Um, I think no. three. I think I heard the average is like for carpentry. The average failing rate is around two to three times. Yeah. So it, it's got to be at least three. So after your third time, I believe you have to take a refresher course, um, which you have to pay for. Um, and I think it's a two-month course, where you go and you just refresh what you should have, you should already know going into the test. But there is a really high failure rate. It, it is seventy to seventy-five percent of people who take that test fail the first time. Yeah, so one of the things I would encourage you to do while you're in high school, to prevent that very thing from happening, is uh, continue to focus on your math courses. Um, a lot of the trades still require you to have your math courses, right? So even if math is something that's a bit of a struggle for you, you still gotta bear down with that one and make sure that you, you get uh, a, a good understanding of it. Um, a lot of the apprenticeships, especially things like electrician, you have to have your grade 12 math, and they say you should probably have physics too, right? And that'll help you. I mean, it's directly related to everything you're doing in the next group right now, right? Uh, physics isn't an absolute must, but it's a recommendation. Math is a must. Yeah? Um, does it matter which math you take in order to get the uh, better opportunity for it? Uh, generally, the MAP 4C course is the one that uh, most you know, or most colleges will recognize. Um, there is an MCT course, but I don't think we offer it. Most high schools aren't offering it. It's directly trade related. So your next bet is the MAP 4C. Is that applied? Is that what that is? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's college level, yeah. Now, if you take any of the higher ones, uh, the U courses or uh, data management or any of those. I mean, they all apply, but I think the MAP4C is kind of the standard that they're looking for. Okay? I don't think calculus really applies. I think 
if that's what you're considering, right? Um, but um, I'm not really sure. For, for a trade, uh, you should have college level math. Um, but like my son, I keep using that example, electromechanical engineer technician, he took university functions and did fairly well in it. And he says up and down, if he had to taken that class and did fairly well in it, that he would have probably failed out of his, his college level course. So it's a, it's a um, it's robotics and PLCs and, and, and whatnot and coding and it's a lot and you, it's a lot of math. It's more math than you think at that level, but for a trade, like carpentry, you gotta have, you gotta have it. Yeah. Um, you, you're gonna, you gotta like basic, basic math areas, yeah. um, and yeah. it is a prerequisite anyway to get into that trade, is it not? Yeah. I, I believe so. So you, that's that's what you gotta do. I would, I would, in anything, even in life, I would strive for at least a college level math. Yeah. High school math courses are kind of broad based, where you're learning all different things, right? And as you kind of get into your trade, it becomes a little more narrow. But the skills you need, you need to know real well, right? And you get the basis, or the, the backbone for those in your high school credits, um, and then you kind of specialize in them as you go through your college program and your apprenticeship. Geometry is huge in, in carpentry, right? No fractions, angles. angles, fractions, yeah, fractions, math, like um, knowing how to add to track fractions, right? even just squaring up a wall, right? Knowing uh, the Pythagorean theorem, right? So, have you ever wondered whether anything's ever going to apply in real life? We're telling you this, these kind of things, right? And they're going to come into play in any number of different trades. Um, and if you don't know, and you're, you're exploring different things, you drop some of them that way. Those are the things I would say to keep alive. Okay? Any other questions? Okay, well,